Hello everyone, this is Jen from Old Tinker Studio. In this tutorial, we will be looking at lighting in Blender 2.8. Specifically, we will be exploring the sunlight. So let's get on with the tutorial. I will briefly talk about the common settings between the lights and some differences between the Cycles Render Engine and Eevee when it comes to lighting. There are two common settings among all lights. The type defines the shape of the light and the color is the tint of the emitted light. If we select the light in the default scene and open up the light tab, we see that we have four light options. Point, sun, spot, and area. Let's look at the sunlight. A sunlight provides light of constant intensity emitted in a single direction from infinitely far away. A sunlight can be very handy for a uniform clear daylight open space illumination. The direction can be changed by rotating the sunlight just like any other object but because the light is emitted from a location considered infinitely far away, the location of the sunlight does not affect the rendered result. So in rendered mode, if we move the sunlight up and down along the Z axis, we can see how the light fall off does not change the lighting on the cube. If we move the sunlight to the top center of the cube, we now see that there is no fall off on the top of the cube and very little on the sides of the cube and slightly less fall off on the bottom of the cube. This will be more evident when we change the color. Let's look at the options available to us. We have a preview window that will show us what the light will look like in this scene. We can change the color using the color picker so if we change the color to a bright yellow, I'm using the hex code of FFD200. We now see that the cube has a yellow color highlight added to it from the sunlight. We can change how weak or how strong the sunlight is by changing the strength option. The specular option is for EV only, and we'll talk about that in a moment. The angle is the size of the sunlight according to its angular diameter, as opposed to its actual size, as seen from Earth. Now the rest of the options available are different for the EV and Cycles render engine. So we'll start with the options available in the EV render engine. The specular option is a light intensity multiplier and is used for more artistic control. Anything other than a 1 will provide non-photorealistic results. So let's add a plane. And scale it up. Now let's look at the shadow options. Let's move the sunlight to the back of the cube. And then angle it towards the cube. Okay. 
the bias is applied to the ray tracing to reduce the self-shadowing artifacts. The cascaded shadow map is a special kind of shadow map that's used by sunlights. Because they can shadow large scenes, the count is the number of cascades to use. The more cascades used, the better precision, but a lower update rate. If we lower the count, we can see that the shadow is becoming softer around the edges and a bit darker. And at one, the shadow disappears. Fade is the transition area between the two cascades. Higher values mean less overall resolution because cascades need to overlap. So if we change the fade to 0.8, we can see the lower resolution of the shadow. The max distance is the distance away from the view origin or camera origin if you're in camera view to cover the cascade. If the view far clip distance is lower than the max distance, the lowest of the two will be used. And this only works in perspective view. Distribution puts more resolution towards the near clip plane. And again, this only works in perspective view. So if we change the distribution to 0.1, we can see a dramatic change in the shadow being cast by the cube. Contact shadows fix light leaking caused by bias or shadow map under sampling. The distance deals with the ambient occlusion. The bias is the same as the bias under the general light. And the thickness is used to detect occlusion, treating any occlude as thick. So let's change to the cycles render engine and open up the light tab again. The max bounces reference the maximum number of bounces the light will contribute to the scene. And in cycles, shadows are simply turned on and off. This has been a quick overview of the sunlight in Blender. The other lights will be inspected in future videos. If you're interested in learning more about 3D art and animation, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.